Alliance has banned all domestic flights for trips that could be made in two and a half hours or less by high-speed rail. It is essential and it should have been happening for a long time. Especially that we have many connections in France, we have other ways to be able to travel rather than taking the train. If the journey can be made by train in less than two and a half hours, the commercial flight is off the table. Welcome back. Sounds ambitious, doesn't it? France um, just announced a big ban on short-haul flights. So the most polluting way to travel no longer allowed, which, you know, sounds like a really environmentally progressive move, except it's actually nothing like what it sounds. And we're going to tell you why. The government says this is essential to reduce global warming greenhouse gas emissions from the aviation industry. Junior Minister of the Green Transition tweeted that this was one more step towards the decarbonization of our transport. So let's start by explaining why the idea makes sense, but really falls apart in the execution. So first of all, France, um, it does have a seriously good network of high-speed rail. So, you know, for example, here in Canada, you know, to get from, say, Ottawa to Toronto by train takes almost five hours. But a slightly longer distance trip in France, so say from Paris to Lyon, that's about two hours by train. So the thinking goes, you know, trains are so fast, so efficient in France that if you can make the trip by train in two and a half hours or less, the government says the same trip by plane just isn't worth the environmental cost, so they've banned them. But there are exceptions. First, it only applies to cities where direct trains run several times a day, which would allow, you know, passengers to spend at least eight hours at their destination and still catch a train home at night. So that rules out a bunch of smaller routes. Second, it doesn't apply to connecting flights. So short plane rides that are part of a bigger trip are still okay. And finally, the entire Charles de Gaulle airport is itself one giant exception. And that's one of the busiest flight hubs in Europe. Short haul flights out of there are still allowed. So what does that leave you with? Well, three flights all leaving the Orly Airport near central Paris, heading to Nantes, Lyon, and Bordeaux. That's it, three flights. And those flights haven't even actually been running lately since the government forced airlines to um, cut routes during the pandemic in exchange for financial aid. But critics call it at best a symbolic gesture and at worst, scandalous greenwashing. The airline industry, many of the leaders have said, look, this is purely symbolic, hmm. that really what they should be doing is more work on cutting carbon emissions efficiently. According to Greenpeace France, the affected flights represent just three among 100 domestic routes. So just a fraction of the local flights. This is largely symbolic that, uh, you know, this is three flight routes that have train replacement services. These are flight routes that are two and a half hours or less. Um, and so they're really a small fraction of the overall uh, routes that, that travel, not just within France, but around the region, around Europe, around the world every day. And aviation overall, just to put that into context, is just 2% of overall global CO2 emissions. Aviation rests within a larger transport sector, which contributes, depending on where you live, roughly a quarter to much more, depending on where you are, um, of global CO2 emissions. But if you start to then think about that in terms of um, how much these three routes contribute materially, um, it is quite small. So it really is a symbolic step that is opening up these conversations, that is opening up through innovative policies, uh, new possibilities for interventions. So there are um, two ways to address the question of the environmental benefits. First, you know, just to repeat the obvious, according to one group, the three banned routes were only responsible for about 3% of French domestic plane emissions and 0.3% of emissions when you count international flights. But to be fair, this new law is part of the country's broader commitment to decarbonize transport, which France says accounts for 30% of emissions. So even if it's symbolic, France's transport minister described the ban as an essential step, saying, as we fight relentlessly to decarbonize our lifestyles, how can we justify the use of the plane between the big cities, which benefit from regular, fast and efficient connections by train? I think it's important to take into account some behaviors, some activities which should contribute a bit more to the greening of our transport system. 
This new policy in France is just another example of how we create these touch points where individual consumers can take a moment and pause and think, wow, the behaviors that I'm taking do have an impact on the climate. And how might I change those behaviors to minimize or diminish my impact on climate change? And so while train travel is now without its own contributions to climate change, roughly, you know, on a per passenger per mile basis, it's about a third of what air uh, travel entails. And so when we're given those opportunities to make changes, especially if the replacement service is just as good quality or maybe even more of a pleasant experience uh, than sitting in, a, in an airport terminal and having to wait for a flight and sitting on a cramped airplane and we can enjoy ourselves on a train, that these then provide those viable alternatives, that policy uh, interventions then provide opportunities for us to make different choices individually that then stack up to collective change. Now we should point out the short haul ban uh, didn't always start out as meek as it currently is. In 2019, French President Emmanuel Macron proposed a higher threshold that if you could get somewhere by train in four hours, the equivalent flight should be banned. But, you know, there was pushback there from, from airlines themselves in some cases, and we can see today how that fight turned out. But there's also a wait and see period. The French government wants to make sure that the trains can accommodate the extra capacity. So, you know, the rules, while weak, are also pretty intentional. There's um, a plan to review the list in three years and, you know, potentially add more routes. I do see that uh, France could be the first of several European countries that could take these steps. I do think that it is important to think about um, infrastructure and the way in which infrastructure may compel or constrain certain countries to be able to take this kind of action. If you take our North American perspective and, and landscapes as a contrasting view, that to have train replacement between, say, Calgary and Vancouver is a very different uh, conversation than it is between Paris and Marseille. Um, and so while I do think that this is something that can be adap adapted within, adopted within other countries within Europe and other smaller countries, it's much more difficult when we're looking at, say, Canada and the United States. And even Greenpeace says that this ban is a step in the right direction, just that it's a very small step in a very big journey.